Our meeting tonight is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Pilar from New York, go ahead, please. Hi, good evening. Um, I want to express my gratitude for um, a wonderful past Sunday. I woke up, I had no intention of going to Plainfield, but something woke me up very early, and I was kind of like, what am I doing this wide awake? Um, and the thought of Plainfield popped into my head. I said, oh, no, 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 it's not going to happen, not this Sunday. And I tried to turn around and continue with my sleep, but something would not let me. So finally I said, okay, God, if this is what you want me to do today, I'll do it. So I started my preparation. I got to the station and and made the journey to Plainfield um, very kindly. Linda picked me up and we went to the church. Service was amazing. Um, I have gone there with some complaint of trouble with my leg and by the time I left um, and Linda brought me back to the station I was able to go those stairs pretty easily. Um, the trip back was again very uneventful and peaceful and I got home um, safe and sound. I also want to indicate that I was, as I was waiting outside uh, the stairs uh, leading to the church. I looked down, and there was this stone, um, common one, and I remarked to uh, a, a little, oh, look, this this stone has a kind of funny shape. And she goes, well, kids sometimes come and play around. But when I look closely, it was almost in the shape of a heart. So even the stones at Plainfield demonstrate love in the shape of a heart. I took that stone and I have it with me here in New York City. And every time I look at it, I remember this wonderful past Sunday. Thank you very much, Florence, for those readings. Very, very helpful. Thank you, everybody at Plainfield. Love you all. Good night. Thank you. Mara from Mississippi. Go ahead, please. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here tonight and so grateful that I found the Plainsville Christian Science Church. Um, I'm especially thankful for the patience, love, and teaching from my practitioner. I recently had a positive job experience that I wanted to share. About a year ago, when I first moved to Mississippi, I applied for a part-time position at a location that I really wanted to work at. I was turned down because there was already someone filling that position. And I was initially disappointed, but I was hired as a substitute for when the full-time person was unavailable. Um, I had a negative incident with this uh, instructor that I was substituting for. But with the help of my practitioner and progression in Christian science, I was able to see her as a child of God and identify her negative behavior as animal magnetism. I felt my issue with her was resolved without having to defend myself to her or our supervisor. I have been listening to and reading the article called Place by Mary Baker Eddy found on the Plainfield Christian Science website. The entire article is so beautiful and I found very helpful. I especially love the quote, you really have no need for, for you are already complete in God. I prayed and decided I didn't care what my job would be or where, but I just wanted to bless and do what God wanted. Shortly after, my prayers were answered. <laughs> Uh, the supervisor called me and offered me a position to replace the other instructor who had resigned. Uh, I started today, and it was a wonderful experience with positive and loving people. Uh, I'm so grateful for all that I'm learning in Christian science, 
and uh, thank you to everyone at Plainfield Christian Science Church, and uh, thank you for the beautiful reading uh, tonight, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy, Texas. Nancy from Texas. Go ahead, please. Good evening. I'm very grateful for the church and all that it offers and for Christian science. A time ago, my husband and I purchased a company which had a large room full of computer servers, which were essential to the business. About a week after we purchased the company, there was a air conditioner that cooled the room, and we had to make a claim to the insurance company for all of the servers as the room had heated up to such an extent that the equipment was not considered reliable anymore and could fail over time. The insurance company investigated the claim, asked lots of questions, and were dragging their feet on approving the claim. During this time, my husband, who was not a Christian scientist, found out that the previous owner had a history of dishonest business practices. Naturally, we thought that he might have caused the power outage himself for reasons unknown to us. This upset my husband, and since I was a Christian scientist, I turned to God for some answers. I opened my Bible to Psalm 133 and read these words. The Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. That was my answer. God had commanded the blessing, and the insurance company had to honor the claim. There was no doubt in my mind that we would receive the insurance money to replace the equipment. We had bought the company in good faith, and we could not be punished for someone else's misdeeds. I assured my husband that God was good, and he would bless us, and he did bless us. We received the insurance settlement shortly after and were able to purchase new equipment to run the business. I use this verse from Psalms 133 often when fear and doubt creep into my thinking. Quote, the Lord commanded the blessing, even life. It gives me tremendous confidence and plants my feet on a sure foundation. Christian science teaches us to rely on the inspired word of the Bible as our sufficient guide to eternal life. One more thing. I am so very grateful for Christ Jesus. Mrs. Eddy this church and all that it offers on its website, the lovely church services and the unity watches. Thank you. Thank you. Craig, go ahead, please. Well, Florence, thank you so much for the readings. And I had a lesson related to that uh, very recently. He said, you should love the Lord your God for your heart all your soul, and I was always a little, uh, wasn't sure, but it, now I understand it's your spiritual sense and all your mind. Well, <clears throat> I, uh, I want to obey this, and, uh, but it doesn't mean that God put forth any conditions or exceptions when this doesn't apply. It applies all the time. And I, uh, I had uh, put in my income tax papers some time ago, but they, and I had come up with this idea that I would not tithe until I got my refund. God did say that, but I came up with that from somewhere. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, and nothing's happening, and I've done it well a long time ago. And I, and I, said, to him, I said, well, why did I say that? It wasn't God talking to me. I finally realized it. <clears throat> so I called my financial guy and I said, please make this deduction for church. Soon after, my New Jersey state income tax came through and, and the other one is gen it's usually tied to it, so it'll expect it to be coming through just fine and quickly. But uh, a sneaky little thought came to me that it felt so good. Well, why don't I just wait? But God doesn't make any conditions. If he wants you to love him all the time, he wants you to love him all the time. He wants you to do and support the things that he's involved in. He does. He doesn't want you to do it later. He wants you to do it now. 
So it was a good lesson to me, and uh, and a humbling lesson. <clears throat> I thank God for Mary Baker Eddy, particular chapter on prayer and and the truth that we hear here, which helps us think about what is behind what we're what we're doing. Thank God for Mary Baker Reddy. Thank you. Luba from Ohio. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Also. Thank you also for the beautiful readings tonight, Florence. Recently, I have been experiencing problems of balance and walking with a fear of falling. This is a lie against the truth that I am a reflection of God, a lie against the truth of my true identity. I don't want to live in fear. I want to face it with the truth. Throughout all this, I'm so very grateful for my practitioner's support. Also concerning everything in my life, especially now, I'm learning that my expectations and God's timing and plans for me do not always coincide. But my assurance lies in that God's plans are a guarantee of what's best for me. Thank you so much for all the beautiful music, and I'm so grateful to be here this evening. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the music. I want to express my gratitude to be learning here how to pray without ceasing. As students of Christ and Christian science, this is something that we need to do. Before coming to Plainfield, I had no concept of what this meant. But through regular practitioner support, the classes, and many other resources found on our website, I have been learning how to bring, quote, into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, end quote, as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 10. Some time ago, during the evening, I misjudged my footing while stepping off a, a ladder a small step ladder. I landed squarely on my elbow and shoulder and it happened so quickly I didn't catch myself. I started immediately to affirm God's presence and power and that I could never fall out of his care. This is a powerful truth that we also affirm in the 91st Psalm, which I go back to in situations as these. I'm very grateful my practitioner had me work to commit it to memory for it kept me repeating it many times, and it became a natural part of my thinking. I worked with, quote, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways, and they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, end quote. The pain uh, faded pretty quickly. There was still a tender spot around the elbow. I mentioned the situation the next day to my practitioner. At the time, I was feeling disturbed by the anger of an individual in my experience. She got me to laugh at the idea that we can't go around crawling on the ground to avoid falling and uh, fearing the thoughts of others could disturb our, our life. She reminded me that my dominion comes directly from God and that I was to walk about with this dominion and focus on this, dominion through God and Christ. The rest of the pain left that day, and the next day, and, and uh, pretty quickly, the bruising faded from my shoulder and my elbow, as if the fall had never occurred, which we do understand through the teachings of Christ Jesus and Mary Baker Eddy, that only good is going on ever went on and will go on. I'm very grateful for our ever-present God, Christ Jesus, who showed us the truth of our relationship to God, and Mrs. Eddy, who discovered the science of the Christ. I'm grateful for my practitioner who has been opening my eyes in this church community. Thank you. Bruce. So I'm very grateful for an article that's on our website. It's called Day, and it's written by Mary Baker Reddy. 
and it's really a wonderful article. I found it extremely helpful. One of the statements that uh, Mrs. Eddy made in it was that today she will begin to have to believe tremendously in the power of a constructive mental attitude. And that reminded me of an experience that my wife and I had recently. Uh, there was a little while ago that she and I were involved on a road trip across the country. And we were kind of like stuck in the Midwest with some really bad weather. One day we got up and we were going to travel that day. We got on the highway and the speed limit on the highway 75. But because of the weather conditions, we were going anywhere from 15 miles an hour as fast as 35 miles an hour. And I got to admit, I was getting to be a little bit concerned. But then my wife said, thank God we're moving. <laughs> no, that was the constructive mental attitude that I needed to hear. <laughs> and it came from her. And it relieved me of all my concern. So we were going slowly like that for quite some time until we got out of the bad weather. And then the the traffic sped up. We were up to the regular speed again. Well, we reached one city that we, uh, a landmark city on our way, and I turned to my wife and I says, do you think we can really have a shot at making the next city uh, today, which actually was our original destination that we planned on? And she said, let's go for it. So, and we made it late that night. So you see, the weather didn't keep us from our, uh, our destination that we had intended. And because my wife was clear enough to simply say, thank God we're moving, it cleared all of my concerns up and uh, made me trust more uh, fervently in our Lord who is good and who was governing this whole uh, experience as well. And it all turned out well. So thankful for that. Thank you. Shardy. Hello. Tonight I offer my gratitude for the things I am learning here at the Plainfield Christian Chimes Church Independent. Several weeks ago I started to have a toothache. I remembered a testimony a few weeks ago about a tooth problem that was healed through prayer. I worked with an article by Mary Singletary, called Speaking with Authority to Your Mountains. Included in this article are quotes from pages 390 to 393 of Science and Health of Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. I was approving and following my afternoon watch and working with Bicknell Young's article, Idea, where he says, Sense of Substance includes no sense of deterioration or, or decay. By early evening, all discomfort had ceased. I am very grateful for this healing, and not only uh, for being able to apply the truths I'm learning here, but also for continued practitioner help and learning about Mary Baker Eddy, who always turned to God in all situations and was directed by God as how to share the gospel of truth. How glorious is our God. I have a P.S. You can listen to Mrs. Singletary's testimony on the Plainfield website under Instructional Testimonies from Mrs. Singletary, C.S. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I'm very grateful to be here tonight and to be a member of this church. Before I first arrived here in 2013, I had spent many years in print design, but in the six months prior to coming here, my life as it was completely fell apart. As I fumbled through that time, one of the things I remember thinking was I needed to let go of any identities I had that I was holding on to, such as designer, or husband, or anything else. And by the time I came to Plainfield, my thought was, 
I'll do whatever God had for me to do. I was surprised at the time, and very grateful now, that God gave me back all those things I used to do, and more. It has made me realize over time that God was guiding my whole life before, not just since I came to Plainfield. It seems almost sad or silly now, but for the longest time I didn't know God was right there. But as I look back, it's as plain as day that he was there, informing every decision and steering me to where I am now. And this gives me great joy to know he is doing that same thing for all of mankind. People may feel alone, but in time they will see the truth, that God is with all of us always. I am very grateful for Christian Science, this church, and practitioner support for showing me what is real and good. Thank you. And I have a testimony from Imogen in Australia. Good evening to the sublime Plainfield Independent Congregation, wherever you are. I wanted to express my love and gratitude tonight to the Plainfield Independent practitioners and teachers and to all those who contribute to the outreach of our beautiful church here. Working with a holy practitioner from this church has been the most sublime experience in knowing our Father which art in heaven. I'm so very grateful for all the learning I'm experiencing here. We had a beautiful Unity Watch on Tuesday, once again so perfectly fitted to meet every need. I particularly loved when Linda read from hymn 283, quote, Come, let us sing, praising our God and our King. Should we be silent? Ah, never. End quote. Before coming to Plainfield, I was often told that I was too gaudy, too noisy about sharing my love of God. What a wonderful and joyful experience it's been for me here, because we are taught here that it is right to sing praises to our God and King, that it is right to share our love of God and Christ Jesus with others. This has been a huge blessing to know this. The Bible says that we should not put our light under a bushel, and learning at Plainfield I have been shown the truth of this. From business dropping into my lap, to walking through dangerous or so-called contagious situations, there has been nothing but blessing for all. I'm very grateful because I am no longer afraid to share my love of God. We are not under fate or circumstance, but under God's divine law that never fails to bless and protect all those who love him and keep his commandments. Thank you for this beautiful testimony meeting tonight. Our beautiful organist. Thank you for the hymns and singing. Thank you to my beautiful practitioner at this church who reminded me this week that, quote, God is our best and ever friend, end quote. This is just so very true our ever friend. I'm very grateful to be a member at this church where we are striving to know God through studying the pure Christian science discovered by Mary Baker Eddy, whose divine truths govern every event of our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Lil. Thank you for the wonderful readings and the beautiful music. I was remembering with great gratitude a day a couple of years ago that I had a few situations that worked out perfectly and I know God was working it all out. I was out doing a few errands when a couple of orange lights lit on my car dashboard and didn't know why. Since we were having a light snowfall, it seemed best to go home. Maybe they'd go out. 
At home, I was able to make a change in a dentist appointment that I had for later that day. The next morning, the lights came on again. So I went to my car dealer to have it this, have this checked out. I didn't have an appointment, so I was told that I had to wait about an hour for service, but they would speed it up as best they could. I agreed. And about 20 minutes later, I was told my car was ready to go and there was no charge. I thanked God so much. The lights were a tire pressure warning. What a perfect working out. I learned more about my car, they put air in my tires, and the weather cleared up as well, and the dentist appointment got changed. Everything just worked out perfectly. I thanked God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, for this wonderful way of life, Christian science, where there's nothing God can't work out perfectly. It's been my blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon. I was reminded today of one of my first healings in Christian science. I used to have hay fever that was very hard, um, difficult. Um, when I came to this church and it was the lawn was being mowed, I would have the allergy and I would have to stay in the house with the windows closed and I would suffer. So I asked a practitioner in this church if this could be healed. And she said, of course. She said, one idea of God cannot harm another idea of God. That was the end of it. After that, I could mow the lawn myself. I could go out. Everything was fine. And it's been many years. And it hasn't, been re hasn't returned. I am so grateful for this healing and that it was permanent, as all healings are. I thank God for this church, practitioner help, and the beautiful readings tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, our human resources department at work sent around a questionnaire asking, what are your goals? I thought, how do I answer that? My only goals are to hear God better, to obey him more every day, to go where he leads me, and to do what he has for me to do today. When I thought about it more, isn't that just like the human mind, planning and straining for success and to get ahead? I'm sure it's good to have some goal in mind or, or some career you'd like to pursue, and to prepare for it. But usually, what God has in mind is so much better than anything I could ever come up with. When we let God plot our path, things seem to fall into place without us realizing it. I remember Mrs. Evans telling me years ago that if we take care of God's business, he'll take care of ours. And that surely has been the case in my life. By the way, I threw the questionnaire in the trash. I'm very grateful for this church and for all that I've been learning and continue to learn here. And thank you. Florence from Georgia. Go ahead, please. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm, and I'm so grateful for how beautifully uh, the organist plays the, the hymns. Tonight, I'd like to give a long overdue uh, gratitude for my sight. Years ago, I was diagnosed as a myopic, which is I only see things that are near me and that I had a uh, problem seeing things afar off. And I was given a pair of glasses and I've been, I, I used it then. But uh, quite honestly, I don't know when I stopped using it. But in place of the glasses, I see what I've been using instead. The fact through Christian science that all my faculties are in mind. And I know now that when I drive even at night, I'm saying, 
I will see only what God sees. That God, my sight is not my material eyeballs seeing, but that God is my sight. And whatever I need to see, I will be able to see. And just like I had the trouble with the driving before, now when I drive or when, when I'm looking at things far off, I'm thinking about God, you know, being myself being the complete reflection of this almighty God ever present. And, and that beautiful hymn or song, Be Thou My Vision, has helped me so much. I know that I haven't given a testimony on this, and I, it's been a long time since I've been able to drive without it. I don't even know where the glasses is, and I haven't been to any, uh, any anybody to get another one or anything like that. But I just wanted to express my deeper gratitude tonight for this healing, because it is through Christian science that I learned that my vision is not my own, and I, I see because God sees. I'm grateful to be here tonight, to hear all the testimonies, and to be a part of such a wonderful atmosphere, everyone sharing such gratitude to our God. Thank you. Mary. Good evening. First, I have to read is from Canada. Many thanks for the sweet singing of the song, There's a Bomb in Gilead. This song is one of my favorites that I listen to quite often by Mahalia Jackson. The singing today touched my heart, and I'm grateful and happy to know that I can and will listen to it again by the Plainfield Singers. In Mississippi, um, thank you for another inspirational Wednesday evening meeting. The readings were beautiful and the testimonies were so helpful. It is reassuring to hear people describe an abundance of instances of God protecting us. I especially love the testimony and healing given by Imogen in Australia, such an amazing example of God's infinite love for us and the power of prayer reaching all over the world. I love the quote from the practitioner that wrapping me up in the love of God. And then this is a testimony from California. Thank you for the posted articles by Andrew Hartsook. In the article on belief and understanding, he talks about the two views of Christian science, either as a religion or as a science. I realized in reading his article that I had always viewed Christian science primarily as a religious institution with its doctrines. No wonder I wasn't making the spiritual progress I desired. Another realization followed that I, since I have been at Plainfield, I have been learning the science that Mrs. Eddy discovered and gave to us. I am so grateful to God for leading me to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent and for all the articles which are leading me to new realizations about the science that I have been blessed to know. In South Dakota, as always, looking forward to the test testimonial meeting tonight. <clears throat> the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, as an expression of the science of Christ, has and continues to bless me. I'm grateful for my practitioner and all the meetings and services that you provide to me and to the world. I'm grateful to God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker Eddy, and to this church for for providing a continuation of the Comforter that had such promise in Mary Baker's Eddie's day and was seemingly lost for many years. Thank you, Plainfield, for demonstrating this resurrection. I am grateful to have found this church that demonstrates such purpose to fulfill the mission to bless all as envisioned by our leader and discoverer and founder of Christian Science. And then... This is a testimony from Hawaii. At a recent roundtable with the subject of man is not material, he is spiritual, was especially joyful and brought a smile to my lips. In particular, the discussion on perverse and contrary. My sister-in-law is from Philadelphia. 
For 30 years, and this is no exaggeration, we had to put up with na na but <laughs> as a response to any comment we made. She sometimes did this even to the detriment of her own position. As she had an advanced degree in social work and expressed authority on all things, we initially respected her opinions. It was a source of frustration for our entire family, and honestly, we, we were either capitulated since one could never win an argument or general comment about mundane things. And eventually, we did the next best thing. We avoided her like the plague. This worked for many years, but as I had, met, had a very close relationship with my brother, I tried to make the best of the situation and kept inviting them over. With prayer and persistence, I began to be frank and honest with her. In our family, expressing what would be considered a rude comment, even just a hint of the contrary, was frowned upon. So I began to use a matter, matter-of-fact voice and not, hint of, and not a hint of hostility when responding to her comments like, Boy, you don't have anything of value in your house. Or, if you downsized any more, Marlene, you'd be living in a tent. <laughs> Thirty years ago, I would have bristled silently. Today, I let it run off me like water on a duck and can even wholeheartedly agree with her. After all, I had to admit she was right, that I didn't take much stock in accumulating belongings at all. I laughed out loud with her. She began to laugh with me, and then began to tone down her negativity. We came to truly enjoy each other's company for who and what we are. I could see her truth. Recently, she had a health scare and confided in me. I felt honored and grateful to be considered someone she should depend on. I am so grateful for the patience and prayerful practice I am learning through Christian science study and instruction. I am learning that God created all of us to be perfect and complete in His sight. I am learning that there is no one not worth the bother. Whether clearly or through a glass darkly, we are all children of God. Thank you so much, Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. With gratitude and aloha. And then from England, I'd like to give thanks for just a very small recent incident. I had to write a letter for a few days ago and reply to one I had received. In order to do this, I needed to refer to the points in the original letter. And so, as I prepared to compose my reply, I went to get the original letter out, but it was not where I expected it to be. I'm usually very careful with correspondence, so this was a surprise, and after some searching, I was rather perplexed that I still had not found the original letter. So I stood still and declared that nothing was lost in God's kingdom, that God knew where it was and asked that he please show me. The rest of the day, no inspiration came, and the following day was really the last day for getting my reply posted. But I kept to the thought that God would reveal the answer. Then my husband came in and mentioned something completely unrelated, and with that the answer just popped into my head to where to look for in my filing. I went and found it and was able to get my reply in the post that day. I was so grateful that we can turn to God with our problems, knowing that mind is all and knows everything. I am very grateful for all that I'm learning at Plainfield and for the helpful testimonies others have given of finding apparently lost things with much gratitude. <clears throat> and the last is from someone new in Montana, a letter. Dear Plainfield, thank you for your Christian science teachings and dedication. I have learned so much regarding our intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father and our Savior, Christ Jesus, through the studies at Plainfield. I grew up in a Baptist church, always feeling God's condemnation and wrath. I couldn't imagine a Heavenly Father loving the likes of me. In 1993, the doctor found a lump in my breast. My boyfriend, now my husband, purchased a copy of Science and Health and told me to read it, and not to worry about what I didn't understand. So I did. Three, le 
Three weeks later, I returned to the doctor, and the lump was gone. The teachings, roundtable, Bible studies, website at Plainfield are so very helpful. I love to hear your instruction, and I treasure your voices. May God bless you and keep you. It's beautiful from a new person. We thank you. And I thank all of you tonight for a wonderful service. Uh, And those were such beautiful readings, so important. In order to have our peace, we must be obedient to the Father. I thought what you read from Miscellany by Mrs. Eddy, follow the directions of God as simplified in Christian science. And though it be through deserts, he will direct you into the paths of peace. That is so true. That is so beautiful. It doesn't matter what difficult situation we are going through. If we are obedient to God, it will be paths of peace. It's a truism. I'm so grateful for this. I'm certainly grateful for Christian science. And and yes, those were beautiful hymns. The last two of my favorites and the words by John Greenleaf Whittier were so beautiful. It's such a joy to be with you all. God bless you and have a good night. Thank you.